I want to ask you, which is more, which is less shocking to you? Okay. That England found a way to lose another important international footy tournament or that English footy supporters uh, behave badly before the game, uh, brawling, forcing their way into the stadium with no tickets, and behave badly after the game, showering um, Rashford, uh, who are the other two? Uh, Rashford and, well, I'll look up their names, but the three black players that missed penalty kicks, showering them with racist abuse. Which of these was less shocking to you? Uh, well, definitely the second one, unfortunately. I mean, the, the, mm. the old expression is for, for black uh, soccer players is you're English when you win, you're black when you lose. I mean, so literally you're in this country, it's almost like a renunciation of your very citizenship if you don't win. And it's, it's I would like to say that it's one of those things where you say it's shocking, but not surprising is the way I would put it. Because the level of race, I mean, anytime you see an outbreak of racism, uh, like we've seen, like we saw the other night. I mean, it, th there is a shock value to it. I mean, to see a, a mural of Marcus Rashford vandalized mm -hmm. is unbelievable to me. I was wondering if the people who vandalized that mural, if their children were fed because Marcus Rashford engaged in an unprecedented activist campaign during the heights of COVID, right. not only supply food to the poor of the UK, but also played a serious and recognized role in pressuring the government to actually provide subsidies for food. Yes. So we're talking about somebody, this wasn't just some, you know, oh, my foundation is is putting out some, some free turkeys. This was something that, I mean, affected the lives of literally tens of millions of people across Great Britain because Marcus Rashford raised the temperature dramatically in the country around the question of, of youth hunger during COVID. And so I was like, how many of these folks had families that were fed by Marcus Rashford who are now turning on Marcus Rashford. And so it, it's not just about finding it shocking or disappointing. It's enraging. It mm -hmm. really is because it, it comes back to, I mean, I think about Jackie Robinson saying, if I had to uh, make the baseball hall of fame or have full citizenship for my people, I would choose full citizenship time and again. In, in England, in this example, there is no full citizenship. No. It's you are an outsider because you miss this kick. And that is truly a renunciation and a mark of shame, of not just on England, because this wouldn't only happen in England, I don't think. No. But at the same time. It happens it, in Canada, Dave. Yes, exactly, exactly. This idea of conditional citizenship based upon your athletic skills. I mean, you can see that happen all over the, 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 the white Western world, but this is England's moment to feel shame because of this and to be rightly denounced because of the actions of its fans. Yeah, I, I mean, I was gonna call it provisional and it's mm -hmm. there until you mess up. And then at that point, the mainstream calls themselves revoking your membership in this club. And like you, I'm not surprised. Like, and this is also predictable and it's part of a routine, it's part of a dance that we do because now like my inbox is, is filling up with like requests. Hey, can you do an interview with us to talk about how bad this racism is? And like, I didn't expect anything different to happen when, when uh, the last young guy missed the shot. He didn't miss the shot, sorry. When the shot, when the goalkeeper blocked the shot. And because frankly, like I do not, I do not harbor expectations. Um, I do not harbor high expectations of uh, a lot of white sports fans. It's not as like white individuals, but just over time. And we're not talking about uh, isolated incidents here. Like I just have never seen evidence to show me that a group of people are going to react differently. And someone could look at me and say, well, isn't it racist of you to, uh, assume that white people are gonna uh, say racist things about black people <laughs> after an incident like this? I'm, Cause I'm sure that person's gonna show up in the comments and you know, I wouldn't have to feel that way if white people wouldn't do racist stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't harbor low expectations of white people who are not racist. The white people in my circle, I have very high expectations of them and they meet those expectations. But in, in, a, in, a, in a situation like this, cause the other thing we know about sport, for as much as people talk about sport uniting us, the sport brings the worst out of a lot of people. 
brings the worst out of a lot of people. And you, if you have an opportunity, if these people have an opportunity to scapegoat some black people, even though these, even though these are the same people that brought England to the final, same group of guys. But if you have an excuse to scapegoat them, then this is what folks are going to do. And I don't know like how much of like how much me talking about it and how much of me saying racism is bad is going to change that. Um, because the difference too, it's the extent that like this type of racism here, like this discretionary racism is by choice. People choose to say something, people choose to tweet what they tweet, people choose uh, to try to assault black and brown, brown people on the street. The people that do those things, I don't hang out with them. They don't listen to me. They're not going to take my word for anything. Um, like one of the lessons of uh, the whole Rachel Nichols drama right, was that white people will say stuff around each other that they won't say around non-white people. So I don't know what I can say to, to make someone who's going to punch a Black person on the street because Rashford missed a shot reconsider. Dave, go ahead. Just uh, the other two players were Biako Saka and uh, Jaden Sancho. Thank you. I could not remember those names. And, Megan, go yeah. ahead. Oh, and ju just that one, one of those players, Saka, was 19 years old. Yes. And the coach, Gareth Southgate, I mean, to his great credit, uh, has, has come forward and said, you know, bring the abuse over here because what the hell right. was I doing Put a 19-year-old out in that position when exactly. I had other players who should have done it? Frankly, it seems so obvious he should have thought of it beforehand, but at least he's stepping up to the mic and taking accountability. Yeah, and, and, in, this, and, in, the, and, and in the culture of that sport too, where people are usually reflexively so hard on coaches for the decisions they make, all of a sudden, this is the player's fault. Not to mention, we're gonna, Megan, I'm going to bring you in a second. But um, we, you watch, you've watched a, a soccer penalty kick shootout. There is no way it is like physically impossible for a goalkeeper to react to a shot. All anybody is doing is guessing. Like this is one step removed from playing roulette. This is almost a pure game of chance. Because if they shoot it on target, either the person has guessed the right way or they haven't. So now you're blaming. Uh, these players essentially for a goalkeeper's luck because the goalkeeper is never reacting to the shot. Before the shot goes off, this goalkeeper knows I'm going high left, high right, low left, low right, or I'm staying in place. And the goalkeeper is going to block the same number of shots standing still as he or she is diving one way or the other. Yet somehow this is Saka's fault. Megan, go ahead. You know, I never would have guessed in 2021 that I would have had Pierce Morgan standing up for black people on my bingo right. card. Right. He tweeted uh, early in the morning, and I quote, when England's players took the knee last night, I was pleased to hear loud applause drown out a few boos. Then our black stars get horrifically racially abused after the game. This is why they take the knee. This is why I support them in taking the knee, end quote. Where was that when Meghan Markle came out and said that she was dealing with uh, racist situations within the hierarchy of the monarchy? Where was this when you had your temper tantrum and stormed off your own show because <laughs> another commentator challenged you on something? Where was this same sympathy and empathy for Black people when that situation was happening? You can't pick and choose when you want to support <laughs> Black people and when you don't want to support Black people. Which is funny that of all people who would have come to the defense of those three gentlemen was Pierce Morgan, of oh. all people. Like, never would have thought I would have had that one on my 2021 bingo card. But I digress. Now, the <laughs> fact that, you know, uh, to Dave's point, a credit to the coach for coming out and saying, or excuse me, let's get my terminology correct, the manager, the manager um, yes. for coming out and taking, taking the heat. But it's too little too late, to be honest with you, in my opinion, as a black athlete, a former black athlete, you should have had my back in that moment. If you are going to come out and say after the fact, when all these racist things start to happen because we lost, that you made the wrong decision, you should have known as the manager of our nation's team in that moment that you were making the wrong decision, that you were potentially doing this. Like, isn't that like the biggest point of the game in that moment as a manager, that if you go into a penalty kick situation, you have your, if I'm not mistaken, five best kickers and goal scorers in a penalty situation in that moment. Isn't that something that you do 
in part of your game prep and game mm. um game scouting when you go up against a team in in Italy who if I'm not mistaken and please correct me if I, I am wrong um is one of the best penalty kicking teams in Euro 2020 was at least in this matchup between the two teams because I saw a lot of that on Twitter when it was going into penalty kicks all I saw was oh gosh Italy's one of the best like that's all I saw. And England doesn't have great penalty kickers. Like I saw all of that across my timeline. So please correct me if I am incorrect, but that is what I saw in the Twitterverse. But for me, it's the situation of England showed, uh, and please bleep this out if you have to on the editing side, but England showed their asses. They showed their asses in this moment. You showed your asses before the before the match even started with your ignorance and stupidity trying to bum rush security who were probably, you know, not even real security people bum rushing them to get into the stadium because you didn't have tickets. Then because of three players only, not even, you can't even blame the rest of the team apparently because if you are so good and it's, it's solely on those three players and those three players' shoulders, why aren't you putting it on the rest of the team for even being tied going into penalties, penalty kicks? Why weren't you up 2-1 in this game then? Thank you. If your team is so good and you're going to put this solely on those three players, why weren't you up 2-1 and this wouldn't have even been a situation? So, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. England showed their ass. They showed their ass for what we already knew they were. Majority racist. They showed their ass when Meghan Markle came out with her situation. And they showed their ass again in the span of what, four months? Maya Angelou always said, when, shum, when someone shows you who they are, trust them the first time. We've had centuries of the UK showing us their asses. Let this, uh, let this stand as like the one and only time anyone on this show is going to quote Piers Morgan. 